I managed to fail just about every single class I can get my hands on, except one, gym. <laughs> yeah, I was on the honor roll for gym. But the math, the time, the English, <laughs> I was not doing well. And since I wasn't doing any classwork and I wasn't doing any homework, I needed to do something to occupy my time. So I invented new ways to piss off my teachers. I got in so much trouble, I had in-school suspension, out-of-school suspension, detention, every kind of instrument school had, I was there. <laughs> and they decided to remove me out of general population. They wanted to put me in a special school for special people, because that was special. <laughs> but some of my teachers liked me. They thought I was a comedian, so they wanted to give me one chance to stay in school. And that one chance meant that my father, a very tall, a very broad, a very diesel, evil-looking, dark-skinned Puerto Rican man, so ugly he deserved to be on America's Most Wanted. <laughs> Had to come to my school and talk to my teachers about my behavior. I knew he was going to kill me. <laughs> but I figured if I could get him to school, I'd be okay. So I went home and with the most, with as much honesty as I could put together, with the straightest face that I could put together, I went home and I looked at my father and said, Bobby, you gotta come to school. They're giving me a Student of the Year Award. <laughs> The cheerleaders going to be like, go Carlos, go Carlos. <laughs> and I know what my father was thinking. My son is stupid. <laughs> but he wanted to see just how far I was willing to go. So he went with me and we walked in and it was just the way I planned. We walked in and there was the vice principal, the teacher, the secretary with the screaming distance so she could dial 911. <laughs> and they gave my father my file. And he looked at it and he looked at me. Looked at it again. Looked at me. Started reading about all the day cut, I cut school, trying to figure out where I was. You know, reading about the in-school suspension, out-of-school suspension, and just getting out key. You know? And by now, I'm starting to get a little freaked out, because my dad turned to turn red. My dad's a dark-skinned Puerto Rican man. He's not supposed to turn red. <laughs> and what's even worse is he's not saying anything. And my dad's a typical Puerto Rican man. The way he communicates is by yelling, go out to trash, break the remote. Even when he tried to communicate emotion, I love you! That's the way he does it. <laughs> and in this situation, out of my father's mouth, comes the sweetest, most gentlest, most beautiful voice I've ever heard in my life. As he looks at my vice principal and says, Can I have a moment alone with my son? <laughs> that wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> and as they watched that, I looked at them and said, All of you are sisters to murder. You can't leave me in here with this bad man. I'm going to be on no tea thing now. Where am I going to go? Just from like, well. <laughs> but I had a plan B because every plan has a plan B. And my plan B was simple. My father is old and I am young. I cannot run him. <laughs> and as the door began to close, I was like ready, set, and suddenly my father began to move faster than I've ever seen him move before in my life. It was like a Puerto Rican version of the Matrix. Un poquito de salsa. And he grabbed me, and he sat me down. And he sat me down, gently, which scared the crap out of me. <laughs> and in this situation, I did what any young Latino would. My eyes started to water up, and I wanted to cry for my mom. <laughs> but I could not cry in front of my father and show fear. So I tried to hold it in, and you know what happens when you try to hold it in. This. <laughs> and my father asked me, of course, what's wrong? And then I tried to talk, which is error number two. And I go, <laughs> And then suddenly, like an explosion, my father began to scream and yell and scream and yell. And this is the man I know and love. And all of a sudden, he got calm again. And I'm thinking, he lost his mind. And he looked at me and he said, your grandmother was a migrant worker. She came from Puerto Rico with my eight brothers and sisters. And she went up and down the East Coast, following the season, looking for work wherever she could. Working 13 hour days, and she would come home, and her hands would be bloody, and her feet would be swollen, she would be dirty, she would be tired, she would be broken. And when my father abandoned us, I had to go work in a factory and be a father, a son, a brother, and I managed to graduate high school. Yo trabajado mi vida completa so that you and your two sisters can go to school. Mijo, you're my only son. You are my namesake. Tu tienes mi nombre. I'm going to give you two options. I was like, yes. 
I love America. He looked at me and he said, you can stay in school and live, or you can drop out and die.